This is an interesting one. I advised these people to get rid of this tree months ago because it was causing damage to this structure that they want to refurbish. Unfortunately, a neighbor was very, very upset because this tree blocked the view of the water tower as well as giving them some shade in their backyard. And these people didn't want to start a problem. They were brand new to the area, so they decided to leave the tree. The contractors went ahead and resurfaced this building right around the tree. And they actually grouted it right into the building. <laughs> So, it's anybody's guess how long before it causes further damage. Both sides. Well, that wasn't reasons. the job. The job was to trim this Italian cypress. And the tree, the home was over 100 years old. And the tree was easily 100 years old. It's one of the largest Italian cypress I've ever seen. And definitely the largest one I've ever worked in. Because typically Italian cypress don't grow big and wide like this. They're more of a, a tall columnar tree, like, like this one right here. This tree is about oh, 20, 25 years old, and that's what you normally see. Even when they get bigger, they, they have that um, real tight configuration. But this tree is so old that it, it grew in more of a structure that we could actually get up into. And what was really interesting is the tree had never had anyone trim it. In over a hundred years, there was only one spot where I saw a cut, and that was one low, low branch. I think I show it a little bit later here. But the tree was just loaded with dead. The, the whole thing was full of dead. And it turns out it was two trees side by side. I don't know why anybody would plant two Italian cypress that close to each other. Um, maybe one was an offshoot of the big one. I don't know. So at one time, you could tell that um, it kept flopping open so that they put wires around it. So throughout the tree, we kept finding all these old, ancient wires that were presumably to, to hold the branches in um, because we were using the chainsaw. We had to get all that wire out of there. You know, it was, it was a, wire. a hazard. It was an interesting tree to work on because, you know, we really didn't know what we were going to achieve by, by cleaning out all the deadwood. We knew it looked a lot cleaner, but we didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into until we got up in there. And it was a slow job. We, <laughs> we had uh, three of us were up in the tree at one point, and the rest of the day, um, my son and Jorge got into it, and I ended up doing ground. I think I got the short end of the stick on this job. That was tough work. There, that's the only cut that I could see in the, in the whole tree. And I, I'm going to clean it up, but it would be a mistake to make too big of a cut. So that's about where I should do it. And a lot of people would cut it so that you don't see that, that tear. Uh, but, but I believe that would be a mistake because that would open a much larger wound that is necessary. So sometimes you have to leave things in trees that are a little bit ugly. So I got out and I had to sharpen one of the saws. And I thought I'd show you something. If... You can't really see in this, but the chains nowadays have these little marks. They're little angle marks at the bottom of the tooth. And some of these teeth, like that one right there, that one's just a little bit too steep. You want there to be consistency in all the teeth all the way through. So I sharpened it back up and made a huge difference in cutting. This is, uh, because it was all dead wood, it was really hard. They actually had a, a surveillance camera mounted to this tree. Felt like our clients were watching this work. <laughs> so, as you can see, 99% um, of all the cuts that we made in this tree were just dead branches. Now, um, a, a cypress tree like this, many, many trees, many of the conifers, you don't want to trim them when it gets hot. And this is the summertime. So, um, I wanted to show you this real quick, show you how old it is. It's an ancient tree. I counted well over 100 rings in there. So getting back to the heat of the summer, this tree is very susceptible to uh, pitch canker diseases, a ceridium canker. It was loaded with little tiny holes from a, a sap sucker, um, and a bird that pokes little holes in it. It's a type of wood. And the, the tree... Uh, exhibits lots of pitch, lots of sap that comes out of it. 
And ideally, the best time of year to work on a tree like this is when it's cold. That's when the, the sap isn't so so fluid and, and it, it'll congeal more and it's, you're less likely to um, attract insects that, that may be transferring the disease. Well, that's what it looked like at the end of the day. Didn't look a whole lot different, but uh, it, it was. And then I got called out to an emergency. I've got this big Monterey pine. And what happened is it lost a big limb. And when the big limb swung over, it rocked the tree really hard. And there was a crack in the backside of this big tree. So um, I talked to the people. They said that the trunk always leaned, but now it's leaning considerably more. You can see that, that big limb that went through the wires and it fell onto the neighbor's property. They've got it all cleaned up already. But it's, it's, a, it's a massive big tree. And my concern is something is broken underneath. So I'm, I'm surmising that enough weight has already been taken off of it that this tree may be reasonably safe to climb. But these things are sketchy.